day, Africa, and welcome to the AAU Talks here on the AAU TV. And today I have with me Dr. Violet Makuku, who is the Quality Assurance Specialist here at the Association of African Universities. And my name is Kwesi Sam. With me today, we, with Dr. Makuku, we are going to discuss some pertinent issues concerning African higher education and also some key interventions that the AAU has put up to ameliorate some of the challenges that um, we have identified as the higher education institution. We are going to delve deeper into research. We'll be looking at basic education, uh, basic education, also look at some teaching, higher education teaching skills for lecturers, and come to quality assurance. And I know that with me and with Dr. Makuku, we'll be able to do justice to the topic that we have. Dr. Makuku, you're welcome to the studio. Thank you, Kwesi. How are you? I'm fine, and you? I'm good. Great. So we are looking at the AAU's intervention for some key challenges in higher education. And we'll be looking at quality assurance. We'll also look at um, research uh, methodology and also look at some key issues concerning teaching skills and learning as well. So what, in terms of teaching skills, what are the basic issues or what are the major issues confronting African higher education? Uh, thank you, Kwesi. What I'm going to talk about is a worldwide problem mm. about uh, university teaching. You see, the whole recruitment framework is flawed okay. because uh, when uh, universities are recruiting lecturers, they are looking at the specialist areas mm -hmm. and uh, they are not considering whether they've got a teaching professional qualification or not. Mm -hmm. Now, having done a lot of researches uh, related to that here at the Association of African Universities, and also we have a program called uh, Tuning Africa, where more than 300,000 students were asked throughout uh, the continent from uh, more than 30 countries. Okay. The revelation is still the same, that uh, they see that the lecturers have got it. They feel the lecturers have got it. But it's not getting to them. The effective way of having the things getting to them okay. uh, is quite a challenge. So we are so talking about subject matter knowledge and then pedagogical skills. Yes. Okay. So the subject matter, even so when so uh, uh, I normally do my workshops, I start by saying, uh, let's have uh, groups where we discuss what we are going to teach and they pick on one person to teach. I see that being uh, demonstrated quite a lot okay. because then we will not have uh, talked about why we are doing this exercise. And it comes out that the content knowledge is very good, but the transmission, it uh, leaves a lot to be desired. Okay, so what intervention um, are you bringing on board to make sure that lecturers really are on top in terms of pedagogy and also in terms of subject uh, knowledge? Uh, in 2016, uh, we designed a training program okay. uh, called the 21st uh, Teaching Skills for University Personnel. Okay. So within this, the higher education teaching skills, we try and make sure that uh, we address the kind of activities that lecturers can do with university students. Mm -hmm. You know, university students, uh, we have uh, some who are of the age of 25 up to 60 years and beyond, you find mm -hmm. students there. Mm -hmm. uh, let me give you a, a, a real life situation that uh, suppose you have an MBA class of uh, managers from industry, banks, and uh, all that, and you are talking to them for a whole two hours. This is what is happening in the uh, lecture rooms. Okay. Uh, you begin to ask questions such as, so does the lecturer assume that uh, they are empty vessels, they know nothing, but is it true that they don't know anything? Are we doing justice to what they came to learn? Isn't it now we are moving up uh, like this, uh, uh, what we call the Bloom's taxonomy, yeah. which tells us about lower order skills. And as we go up, as people mature 
and they move up the academic hierarchy. We now look at uh, cultivating the more difficult and challenging uh, higher order skills like application. Mm -hmm. We don't talk of more of recall anymore. Innovativeness, creativeness, synthesis, synthesis okay. examination, mm -hmm. evaluation. Okay. Those are the things that the managers are using in the industry to drive the companies forward. So if we talk and talk to them, at what point are we going to make sure we are incorporating these skills through the activities that we give them? It should be a learner-centered approach. Mm -hmm. uh, it should be antragogy where we are appreciating the fact that we are dealing with adults. And as such, they also have something that they have to offer as they learn, they have the capability to create uh, knowledge and skills and we need to afford them that opportunity and okay. it's not really happening okay. in, in many so cases. So in, in such workshops, what, what do you really do? What, um, what is the content of the workshop? What are the expected outcomes that at the end of the day, if a lecturer should attend um, 21st century pedagogical skills um, training, what will be the expected outcome? For, for such workshop. Uh, thank you, Kwesi. We take them through the, the theories. It's very important for people to have a strong background of where we are coming from. What is informing what we are advocating for them to do in the lecture rooms? Okay. So, for example, there's a popular one in psychology, Jean Piaget's theory of cognitive yes. development. Mm. And he talks of uh, uh, the, uh, the mental development, the psychomotor development, and the affective uh, domain. And all this, we want to tell them so that also when they are looking at their students, they are looking at a whole person through that. And me, I've coined something like education of the head, okay. the heart, and the hand. And it makes them remember that it should be holistic. In that, we also move on to talk about the maybe Assessment methods yeah. and assessment levels. I, I normally give them a specification grid to say now when you set questions for them, make sure you have uh, questions which are addressing the higher order skills and not the recall. And also the allocation of marks, the more difficult aspects should also be awarded more marks. So this is what we talk about. We talk about curricular review too. Okay. We talk about the relevance of curricula. Mm -hmm. It's in these workshops that we need to talk about everything to do with teaching and learning. And I think they really appreciate. Great. So who are you looking up to um, in terms of your participant um, from the university? Are you looking at the junior lecturers? Are you looking at senior lecturers or anyone at all who teaches a course in a university as, 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 as a target? Anyone who teaches a course in the university, because what we are saying now is, uh, let's say a lecturer just comes in, and normally I see induction lacking mm -hmm. from the research I have done. I ask them, so when you joined the university, did you get any induction? No, but even if they would get the induction, these old professors who are there, if, uh, do not have the teaching skills themselves. So how will they... Uh, correctly or appropriately induct these um, new lecturers who are just coming. So it's the old professors, uh, the new lecturers, because we want even those who have done some pedagogy earlier on, we want now to retool them. To the 21st century world. Yes, okay. because we now want to request them and uh, conscientize them to use social media. In teaching, because we have the Y.com generation of students mm -hmm. who now use the smartphone, why would you go to stick a timetable on this board and the first student will remove it mm -hmm. instead of you just sending it on your students' yeah, WhatsApp sense. groups okay. and emails? Right. You see, so we want to encourage them uh, to do all these things because earlier on, when they did their pedagogy, uh, professional skill, they did not have this. Okay. So we want it to come aboard now. So you have an upcoming workshop for, uh, for this one, right? 
Uh, when we have, we put them on the blog at AAU, but currently we only have uh, some research workshops coming up okay. and we still need to. Uh, the greater part of last year and early this year, we were concentrating on the teaching skills quite a lot. Okay. But uh, what I want to point out is that uh, some countries are moving very fast to say, at least by the time you get tenured, mm -hmm. you should have uh, some something to show us that you have attended a workshop on uh, uh, teaching skills, university teaching skills. And uh, you, uh, some are also designing internal one-year okay. workshops, one-year programs. But that is not enough because already by the time they finish their teaching, so what do we do? As AAU, we come in with a one-week intensive one mm -hmm. where we are trying to alleviate them before they enroll in this one year or six months certificate or a diploma uh, workshop uh, course that is being offered within the All right. institution. So viewers, if you just tune in, you are on the AAU Talks and this is AAU TV. I'm in the studios with Dr. Makuku and we are discussing some interventions that AAU has put across to support African higher education. We have already discussed issues concerning um, teaching and learning in African higher education. We want to look at research, um, what we are doing about research, and then also look at what AAU is doing concerning quality assurance. And so, Doc, um, looking at research, you know there are a lot of issues concerning research in African higher education, yes. and there has been a lot of interventions. What currently is the, is the association doing to make sure that we are driving the research agenda on the continent? Uh, thank you very much, Kwesi. May you please allow me to start with highlighting some of the challenges sure. that uh, mm -hmm. the Association of African Universities uh, is now aware of because of the constant research and monitoring and evaluation okay. that we do. You'd realize that uh, in some instances, uh, there are new methods like of data collection mm -hmm. or data analysis. And so we still need to read to exactly. the lecturers. And uh, we also encourage students, like uh, postgraduate students or even undergraduate students, mm -hmm. to attend workshops that are to do with research. Okay. We have issues of relevance in research. Sure. We realize that sometimes uh, a coining of a topic that is sensible, that is meaningful, that can contribute uh, effectively to socioeconomic development is a challenge. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there are a lot of challenges there out there, but people cannot coin research topics. So we are moving in to say universities should not be ivory towers where you do research and just for the sake of graduating and you really know as a lecturer from the start and as a student that this research topic will not get you anywhere. anywhere. But we want to make an impact in the society. Okay. We want to resolve the socio-economic challenges that are there. So one of the things that we do is to concentrate on how do you coin a relevant topic for research okay. that can be used by industry. Mm -hmm. That's another one. And we have also realized that uh, in institutions, in terms of uh, research supervision and marking of dissertations, has become a challenge. A huge one, actually. A huge one. So we are trying to unify. Uh, because uh, the scientific method that we follow in research is the same. But somehow, you realize in an institution, nobody will help research activity for the other. Especially in supervision and marking. There are huge disparities. A lecturer would say, when I'm sick or when I'm not here for the next two, three weeks, the students will be waiting for him or her. But uh, I can assure you and testify, Kwesi, that uh, in the institutions where we have gone institution per institution to do research workshops, they ended up testifying that now they can help each other, supervise each other's students, because they now have a shared vision. It comes in terms of uh, sequencing of what should come first, the research problem or, or the what, the objectives, should we have them? 
And the terminology itself, mm -hmm. it's a whole lot of uh, issues that need to be talked about and uh, people have a common understanding. And so this one, we try and uh, minimize uh, the disparities uh, through the research workshops so that there's a shared vision. Great. So in, in your research workshops, what actually do you look at? What is the content? You know, research is very broad. Yes. There are a lot of categories and, and mm. classifications. Okay. What content do you really um, facilitate okay. during your workshops? Uh, it's a, a number of uh, topics that we consider. Uh, we consider coining a topic and also there's the issue of aligning the topic with uh, the aim, mm -hmm. with the statement of the problem, mm -hmm. with the results and recommendations. So you find so many data times... Data in, in, uh, uh, yeah. data analysis as well? We do, okay. we do. But when I look at the first aspect that I've highlighted, when you look at somebody's proposal, it's four researches in one mm -hmm. because the topic is uh, speaking about something else. The aim, the objectives, and the statement of the problem are not really aligned to speak to the same thing. So we work a lot on that. And then, like you said, we go on to the data collection tools. Which are the data collection tools? How can you match them? And now we have uh, extremes of quantitative researchers and qualitative researchers, but we are pushing on the agenda of mixed Mix methods okay. research, right. and we are trying to edge them. You know they are more comfortable with quantitative, those who are qu in quantitative, sure. more comfortable with qualitative, but now we are moving with the other level of research, where I'm saying we have the mixed methods research, and we should uh, therefore make sure the one who is not conversant with qualitative, we beef them. Those who are not conversant with quantitative, we beef them also. And we move now with the mixed methods research. Because it has been realized that the shortcomings of quantitative are covered by the uh, strengths of the qualitative and vice versa. Okay. So in those workshops, we cover that. All right. But you know, basically, when you look at issues surrounding research, a lot of us, let, let me put it like that, especially students, always think of a topic before they look at the problem. <laughs> and yes, so the yes. student right from day one has a topic, yes, but then doesn't know what the problem is, actually is. Uh, and so he, he calls his topic before he looks at the, the, the problem. Yes, Don't yes. you think this is why we have a lot of discrepancy looking at the, the beginning? the research topic, the statement of the problem, the relevance and everything, and even the research questions and hypotheses. Don't you think that that is the basic challenge? Thank you very much, Kwesi. In those workshops too, we dwell much on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, what I've seen uh, really useful and uh, not confusing, okay. it's to start with the statement of the problem. What is the problem? Exactly. What is that you want to do with this problem that you have identified? Can I take an example? If I take, for example, malaria deaths increase uh, due to malaria deaths, excuse me, increase in deaths due to malaria. Mm -hmm. If I look at a, a chemist, maybe, or a pharmacist would want to check are we using drugs that are not expired or drugs that have uh, been well made? Mm -hmm. Something like that. And uh, if I look at a biologist and an environmentalist, they are checking also how is the environment now? Do we have more of a ponds mm -hmm. where water is accumulating and we are not having these uh, filters in order to uh, destroy the sources where mosquitoes breed. Mm -hmm. If I'm uh, in an NGO and uh, maybe I um, uh, distribute uh, mosquito nets and uh, repellents, I'm checking at compliance. Yeah. How are these being used? Can you see relevant research? Mm -hmm. 
and also in each field about the increase in deaths due to malaria, every person in their specialist area can have something to research on related to their area which they understand best. Yeah, that, and that is fantastic. Yes. So do you have any upcoming workshops in, in research? And if you have, where are you hosting it? Who are your target participants? Uh, thank you, Kwesi. Can I start by target participants? Okay. Everybody who does uh, research, mm -hmm. but you know we are also into higher education. We are the voice of higher education in Africa. And uh, we highly uh, encourage institutions to send uh, lecturers to attend these workshops. Uh, the next one is going to be in Zimbabwe, Harare, at the Harare Institute of Technology from 28 uh, April to 31 uh, May. Mm. That's the first one. And the next one is going to be in uh, Zambia, okay. Lusaka, 3 to 6 July. But many more are lined up. Okay. So they normally take four days. So may I be excused here? I meant for Zimbabwe, 28 April mm -hmm. to 3 May. Okay. 28 April to 3 May. Great. So uh, our viewers, if you are a researcher out there, if you're a student who um, you've got into the stage where you're conducting your research, Dr. Violet Makuku has a package for you and she's going to help you choose or select your research problem before you coin a topic, which <laughs> is one of the basic issues that a lot of us um, have when we are starting our thesis or putting up any uh, research. Uh, they work. get stuck on exactly. the topic and exactly. say everything else should fall into the topic, exactly. even if the topic needs to be adjusted after doing the statement of the problem. Great. Then let's also look at quality assurance, because you know that teaching skills, learning in the university, we also looking at issues concerning research. Definitely, we should check quality. And I know you, you have been doing a lot of work concerning quality um, assurance on the continent. And so do you have any plans? Are there any events concerning quality assurance as well? Yes. Uh, can I highlight uh, the activities that we have in quality assurance? Okay. Uh, just in brief, mm. uh, we do what we call m mass university community lectures okay. on uh, building the quality culture. Mm. Uh, in this one, an institution can invite us and we go there and uh, spend like, we can start from like 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. or to 2 p.m. or we can continue the whole day okay. where we have all the university community stakeholders. Mm. Uh, the managers, uh, the, uh, the staff, both teaching and support staff. Mm. And we are talking about uh, quality issues and who is responsible for what and how we can work together as a family to drive the quality agenda. Mm. Because what you realize is that when you take each group separately, uh, there's this thing of saying, uh, this group is supposed to do it. They are the secretaries who need to do it. It's registry who needs to do it. And when we uh, talk to them, we say generally quality is doing right when no one is looking. Exactly. So that you do all your work with minimum supervision. And there's a lot of efficiency. And we also say quality starts with you. Because you don't say that uh, you pass through lights that are on and you know everybody has deserted the premises or a leaking tape and you say ah, until those who are in the works department see it. No, you need to switch off the lights. Sure. Uh, you need to uh, report the tape and you need to make a follow-up even if you are not in the works department because at the end of the day the everybody is going to be affected by the water bill. Sure. That water bill, it's a quality assurance issue because people are just uh, concentrating mostly on teaching and learning. Okay. And yet we need to concentrate on everything from governance to finance to teaching and learning, maintenance of vehicles and buildings. If students fail to go for uh, a field trip, mm. 
Because somebody did not fix the bus on time or somebody did not schedule that bus for that field trip. Isn't it a quality issue? It is. So it's it like is. quality management in a... It is. It is. So there's a, a lot of um, things that are not right, especially misconceptions. Because I've realized most institutions are on teaching and learning. How about student support? They also need uh, uh, the hobbies to, to, to relax, uh, the sporting activities, the clubs, because, you know, just continuous academic work will lead into something else. And also we need to do academic advising if we are lecturers. Mm -hmm. We don't end in teaching. So, so it's all this, but people want to put quality there and quality assurance there. And then there are everyday okay. tasks there. Right. And yet we are saying quality assurance and quality, everything is embedded. Quality fine. is embedded in everything that you do. Okay. So when people talk of best practices, it's quality. That's uh, the good quality we talk about. Yes. But you realize that uh, there are many misconceptions there. Okay. So do you have any events on quality assurance? Um, any upcoming one? Uh, I can uh, cite uh, one event in uh, Botswana, end of April to beginning of May, where we are doing, a, um, a, it's called the ABM uh, College in Botswana. So with them, we are doing a consultative meeting, which is followed by building a quality culture in their institution. And I can assure you, they will never be the same. So they've invited us as the Association of African Universities to go to their institution and uh, help boost their quality culture. And that we are going to do happily. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much for the insight that you're giving to us concerning age intervention on higher education. Your final words to viewers, do you have any words you want to share with them? The entire continent is yours. Oh, I'm telling them, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's embrace quality in everything that we do. Even the issues we have discussed to do with teaching and learning, uh, to do with research, there's another dimension, our community engagement, uh, Kwesi. When we do university industry linkages, we also take our researches which are relevant to industry. industry we sure. bring them, it's still quality. Mm -hmm. And so let's embrace uh, quality in whatever we do with transparency, accountability, and making sure we do our best. And it starts with you. Don't s wait for somebody to do it. If you realize the person who is supposed to do it maybe uh, did not see it, let's uh, encourage them and conscientize them because it's our institution. Sure. And everybody has got a role to play in order to uh, make sure the name of our institution is good. Working on institutional visibility too, it's quality. Yes. Because you may have very good programs, you may have very good personnel, but if students don't know about you, how do they enroll in your institution? Okay. So institutional visibility is good. You need to boost your student numbers. But also when they come and you do good for the students who are there, the student service for the current students should be such that they refer you to their siblings and to their friends. Then you know you are okay. And then you continue to exist the sustainable development through quality. Okay. So quality All right. is the in thing. Great. So quality in everything that we do mm. through our teaching and learning in yes. African higher education, we must ensure quality. Through our research, we must ensure quality. Yes. And finally, also through uh, our administrative roles in the university, we must ensure quality. I have been um, talking to Dr. Violet Makuku, who is the specialist for quality assurance here at the Association of African Universities. And this is all that time will permit us on this segment. Keep watching AU TV, which is the platform that is spearheading African higher education. And there are wonderful segments um, lined up for us. I think, uh, Hello, Kwesi. I think uh, having talked of other uh, events lined up, there's a youth summit. I think you know about it. Can you say a bit about it before we 
close down. Okay, so Thank we you. are also taking this platform to invite all our viewers, all our participants, and then all stakeholders of African higher education. Mm -hmm. We invite you to the Association of African Universities headquarters here in Ghana, and we are hosting our Maiden African Youth Summit. And this summit is also a platform created for um, students and youth on the continent, basically to, to groom them and then support them in making their career choices, also support them in their leadership. How can they adopt business technology to ensure that when they are out of campus, they are able to execute any role wherever they find themselves working. They are nothing but quality leaders. And so we are taking this opportunity to invite you all to the AAU premises here in Ghana. When? That's tomorrow, okay. 18th um, April through to Friday. That is the 20th of April. Mm -hmm. And the time is 11 a.m. We'll be hosting dignitaries. And then we have wonderful packages lined up. And so just drive to the AAU headquarters and we are having African Youth Summit. And everybody is welcome. If you're a student, if you're a young person, wherever you find yourself, you are welcome to this summit. Thank you very much and hope to see you soon. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you, viewers. <laughs>